Good afternoon and, and welcome to, uh, to our program. Uh, as you can see from the overview, we'll have uh, three speakers. Uh, I'm Dr. Mark Berger from, from Actinium. Uh, I'll give an, an overview of our uh, CD33 uh, uh, Actinium labeled program. Um, and then we'll have uh, Dr. Gerald specifically talk about our program in multiple myeloma uh, and Dr. Van Vizian talk about uh, our program uh, in multiple, in, in uh, myelodysplastic syndrome, um, which is actually focused uh, on transplant. So I'll focus on talking about uh, our uh, anti-CD33 uh, program, um, which is using labeling with uh, radioactive actinium. I'll give you an overview of our program. Uh, the program itself uh, is, we often call this ARC, that is uh, antibody radio conjugate program. And the, what we've done uh, in this program is to use radioactive actinium, that is actinium-225, and used it to label uh, anti-CD33 antibody. In this case, the antibody is, is called intuzumab. And as a result, um, we have a potent alpha emitter because actinium-225, uh, as I'll explain, um, degrades and uh, puts out uh, alpha particles which are quite powerful. Uh, and so we have a way to use the antibody to deliver the uh, alpha particles. Um, we have a number of different studies uh, in, our, in our program. We'll, I will talk specifically about our phase two trial um, of older, uh, newly diagnosed AML patients and the results that we recently presented at ASH. Uh, we'll also have a number of, of new programs uh, an Actimab M program in multiple myeloma that Dr. Giralt will speak about, a program in MDS uh, that Dr. Van Bezian will speak about, a program um, very recently announced um, in combining with a CLAG-M salvage regimen, uh, which I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk about. And then we also have, in addition, uh, a uh, platform to be able to uh, add actinium to multiple antibodies, which I'll speak about one of the first efforts in that area. So why use actinium-225? Uh, there are a number of very good reasons. First, um, it's very high energy, um, which leads to very high potency of the molecules that we add actinium-225 to. Uh, in the degradation of actinium-225, we have four alpha particles that are emitted with a total energy of five to eight mega electron volts, which is a, a very high amount of, of energy. Uh, as a result, um, the cells are killed with potentially uh, even with one alpha particle because each alpha particle causes a tremendous amount of DNA double strand breaks and DNA damage. Um, importantly, this doesn't need to be internalized, unlike um, antibody drug conjugated therapies, which need to be internalized in order to have a certain, to, to, to get to a certain concentration of the drug inside a cell. Um, here, the uh, radioactive material uh, in the actinium can actually push alpha particles. Uh, alpha particles are very powerful, as we'll see, and can go right into a cell. Very short path length. That's one of the really interesting aspects of alpha particles. 50 to 80 microns, which is essentially four to, sort of four to six cell lengths. So the potential for safety problems is very limited because the actual damage done is done in a very short distance. The half-life of actinium is also uh, perfect for this use. Actinium-225 itself has a half-life of 10 days. The actual biologic half-life of the actinium-labeled antibody uh, in humans is about three days as the antibody gets broken down. So this mechanism of action, we believe, is very well suited for radiation-sensitive hematologic tumors. Um, and um, potentially, alpha particle therapy can be used in patients who are resistant to standard cytotoxic chemotherapy because it can overcome chemotherapy resistance. Um, the mechanism of killing is also, importantly, independent of genetic abnormalities. So much of the AML treatment uh, today uh, takes patients and reduces them into um, smaller and smaller categories, but the fact is that the alpha particle therapy uh, can be used regardless of genetic abnormalities. And of course, there's potential for combining this therapy and this particular mode of action with other therapies such as cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs. 
We have an expanding uh, CD33 program. Uh, last year, uh, at this time, we'd only have one uh, trial that we could talk about, um, which is, uh, of course, still ongoing, and I'll give an update. Uh, this trial using Actimab A in newly diagnosed patients with AML over 60 who are ineligible to receive uh, intense chemotherapy due to pulmonary or cardiac or, or other dysfunctions. And that study is now in phase two. We also now have ongoing our Actimab M study, which is a phase one study, um, which looks at patients with refractory multiple myeloma, um, as, since, as we'll talk about, uh, CD33 is actually expressed in a decent uh, quantity of patients with multiple myeloma. Still in the planning stages, but will be um, uh, happening this year, is our Actimab MDS trial um, that Dr. Bambizian will, will talk more about. Uh, and here we're really using a myeloablative conditioning. We're using high, higher doses of our anti-CD33 linked, uh, linked to actinium um, with higher doses to be able uh, to, to have a bridge to transplant. And finally, we've, uh, in planning stages, or very late planning stages to start very soon, is our study uh, adding actinium to the CLAGM salvage chemotherapy regimen. CD33, it turns out, is a viable target in multiple diseases. Um, expression is, is really uh, largely uh, in the myeloid and platelet precursors, um, but actually some, some later myeloid cells also express CD33. Um, in AML, CD33 is expressed in virtually all patients. Uh, in multiple myeloma, much less so. About 35% of patients have some CD33, with about 25% of patients have at least 50% of the cells expressing CD33. And it turns out that this, this group is a poor prognosis group. In MDS, CD33 is expressed in about 75% of, of, uh, of uh, patients. Uh, and, and when it's expressed, it's expressed on the large proportion of, of the cells. So to give an overview of our uh, AML program, this originally started out actually using bismuth instead of radioactive bismuth instead of radioactive actinium. Um, and for a couple of reasons, uh, the program then migrated to actinium, which I'll go into. But with the bismuth program, the most important thing was the proof of concept, showing that the vast majority of patients treated had marked decreases in, in bone marrow blasts. Um, but the problem with bismuth, the main problem was that it had a 46-minute half-life, and that makes it very uh, clumsy to use commercially. Um, and actinium, uh, actimab, and actinium, radioactive actinium, as I mentioned, has a 10-day half-life. Gives us plenty of time to be able to conjugate the drug, use it, send it, um, and uh, make it commercially viable. In addition, bismuth uh, emits only one alpha particle. And as I mentioned, um, uh, actinium uh, releases four alpha particles, makes it dramatically uh, more potent and, uh, and more effective. So um, we have some data here from our phase one study um, with, with radio labeled, uh, with actinium labeled anti-CD33 antibody. And here we have um, multiple uh, you know, decreases in bone marrow blasts as well. And, and as a matter of fact, we've been able to show in our phase two um, that we have essentially 80 and 90 percent uh, decreases in bone marrow blasts from, from, the, uh, from the baseline values. So very potent and very effective. In terms of our phase two trial, um, it's a single agent trial, two infusions, seven days apart. Um, and that's used in patients with active, in older patients who have active um, uh, AML um, and who are getting their first treatment for AML. Now, we have a very high remission rate of 69% uh, used as a single agent, which is the data that we presented at ASH uh, and sort of summarized here. In those patients, the median age was 74. Um, eight of those patients uh, had uh, prior hematologic disease with, with five having MDS and uh, two others having CMML. Um, so these were uh, the standard difficult to treat patients that, uh, that, that are seen. Um, limited, very limited non-hematologic toxicities greater than grade three. Clearly, the, the, the most important toxicity here uh, is myelosuppression because we're also hitting normal uh, bone marrow cells that express CD33. Um, and that actually is what, what led to um, our decision to decrease the dose, um, uh, actually the, the dose from 1.5 to, to, from two to 1.5 um, micro, micro curie per kilogram per fraction to reduce the myelosuppression. Um, because we found that these older, unfit patients um, didn't tolerate the length of myelosuppression that came along with using the two microcurie per kilogram dose. 
Um, and of course, that trial is now continuing to enroll patients at those dose. We'll have data uh, expected um, second quarter of this year. Uh, we're fairly confident that we can continue to have the efficacy because in the phase one trial, when we used, uh, in the group that used 1.5 microcurie per kilogram, we certainly had very high efficacy of 67%. So we're, we're looking to, to lower um, the myelosuppression and, and retain the efficacy, and we'll have follow-up data on that. So we very recently announced um, this CLAG-M combination trial. One of the um, purposes of this, of course, um, is that the results of treatment for relapsed refractory AML um, are not great. They, they need improvement. Um, and one of the rationales here, the main rationale here, is to add a, a different mechanism of action to cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs. You could continue to add additional cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs um, and continue to have toxicities that build on each other, but this way we come in with a different mode of action with a toxicity that really only has uh, a, 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 we, a little bit of myelosuppression, uh, and we think we can uh, really improve uh, response rates. So we have a phase one trial. Um, that's ongoing, um, that, that'll be ongoing in adult uh, relapse refractory AML. This allows us to treat um, younger patients uh, as, as well as our, uh, to, to add that, uh, since our present trial is in unfit patients is in older adults. Um, we'll have 12 to 18 patients to determine the MTD, um, and uh, the study will be done at Medical College of Wisconsin, um, where Dr. Atala and Dr. Abedin have been uh, organizing uh, at this trial. So it allows us to expand uh, and find another use for, um, for Actimab uh, in a way that we think can add uh, relatively little toxicity to an, a, a salvage regimen. And finally, um, the, the, this, this is our first, uh, one of the first efforts of our platform. Uh, and the platform is to add actinium, radiolabeled actinium to um, other antibodies. The antibody here we've picked is daratumumab. Um, anti-CD38 antibody used in multiple myeloma. And uh, these are some initial data from three different cell lines um, and uh, several different times, 24, 48, and 72 uh, hours, um, showing that um, if you add uh, actinium to daratumumab, you get uh, between 50 and 80, 90% uh, more cell killing. You get dramatically more cell killing um, by adding the radioactive um, uh, actinium, and of course this is what you'd expect because you're, you're now um, not adding to the anti-CD38 activity, but you're using the, uh, the, the uh, alpha particle uh, therapy as well to have multiple DNA uh, breaks and, and kill cells as well. And obviously this is some initial experiments in, in cells, and then we'll be um, moving, this, uh, moving this forward. So it's a platform that we can use in many different ways, uh, and we're excited about being able to do that. 